Hello everyone, this is Klaus Arena from the University of Tsukuba and this video is Experiment Designs in Computer Science, Topic 6, Sample Sizes. In this video we are going to talk about sample size calculation, so let's go. So, um, when we think about how many observations do we need on our sample, a lot of students uh, think about, okay, maybe we should repeat each experiment 30 times and that's it. Uh, we also see many papers use this sample size without much, too much explanation. Why 30? Is 30 a magic number? Is it a good value? So, remember that in the second class we talked about the central t limit theorem, CLT. It states that the distribution of the sample mean estimator, as it becomes closer to normal as the sample, n, as the sample size n increases, when this n is bigger than 30, the CLT holds, which means the sample means follow a normal distribution for most cases, except some very extreme cases of non-normality. This is important because many test statistics require the assumption of normality. So this is why a lot of people recommend 30, rep 30 repetitions. Other than however, other than potentially guaranteeing the estimator is a normally distributed random variable, uh, there's nothing special about 30 repetitions. In particular, n equals to 30 does not guarantee anything about the power or the confidence of the experiment as we discussed last, uh, in the last video. So even if you choose n equals to 30, you still need to perform power calculations to know exactly what's the power of your experiment. If your experiment costs money, sometimes you can have the same power and confidence with a smaller sample size uh, for a cheaper experiment. So it's important to think about uh, what is the appropriate sample size for ex your experiment and not just use n equals to 30 blindly. So to test the sample size for, it, it will depends on what kind of test we are doing to, to calculate the sample size. If we think about one sample test, the very first test that we describe in the lecture, the sample size calculation is related to the power calculation. So if we fix the value of power and the value of delta, the uh, value of relevance, the calculation of the power t test will give us the minimum sample size. So going back to the example in the last video, let's say that we have standard deviation one that we know a priori or we calculated using a preliminary test. And then we have our significance level, which will be our alpha, uh, the type of test, which is one sample, the alternative, one-sided, and then we have the desired power and the desired delta. And this gives us the uh, sample size calculation. In this case, n is 47.98. We round this value up, which means that for this experiment, under these conditions, we need 48 uh, observations in our sample. Okay, so we need 48 observations to detect a one side effect of delta equal to 0 0.5 or more on the mean with a power level of 0 0.85. What if we have two means? Okay, what if we are comparing two samples? So what do we do? Uh, let's consider similar parameters. So the desired significance in this case will be 0 0.05. The desired power 1 minus beta is 0 0.8. The effect size, the difference between the two samples that we want to detect is at least delta equal to 15. Uh, but we don't know the variance of the samples. So how do we calculate the sample size in this case? The calculation of the sample size follows this formula. Uh, the idea is that if both samples have approximately equal variances, the sample size ratio, the optimal ratio of sample sizes would be n1 equal n2 equal n. And this is an observation that is very important. When we start to calculate sample size, it's not necessary that both of the samples have the exact same size. It's not necessary for a fair experiment. The sample size should be roughly proportional to the variance of each uh, sample because as we talked in the very first video, the idea of having multiple observations is to reduce the effect of the variance. So samples with larger variance, we want to have larger sample size. In this case, we are assuming that they are approximately equal variances, so we have approximately equal sample sizes. And the sample size n is calculated as two times the t um, the t percentile of alpha 2 to n plus the beta per, t beta percentile divided by d, where d is delta divided by sigma. 
However, in this case, we don't know the sigma. Um, and also, we need to calculate this t, which is the percentile of the t distribution. And if you notice, it, this t requires a parameter that is the degree of freedom, which is n. So to calculate n, we need the value of n. So what we do here in terms of calculation, what is done is a uh, interactive approach where we define an initial value for n and we iterate on this formula until the formula converges. Of course, when we use uh, some uh, calculation from the library in R or in Excel or in Python, this is done for us. But it's interesting to know how the calculation is performed. So back to the original sample, if we estimate the standard deviation to be equal to 15, we would calculate the sample size as delta, so that's our difference, 15, the standard deviation is also 15, the significance level is 5, the power is 0 0.8, and here we are using two samples with one-sided alternative. When we plug this into the power of t test formula, we have that our n is 13. Okay, or actually 14 because we round up. So for each sample, we only need 14 observations. Okay, so this is interesting. We don't need necessarily 30. Uh, we can need less observations in a sample. Um, so that's one of the benefits of calculating the precise sample size. The power calculation formulas and functions, they are convenient, but they leave us with a problem. We need a variance. So in the last formula, we need a variance to calculate the sample size but we need to do an exper experiment to estimate the variance. So what do we do? How do we obtain the variance without having an experiment in the first place? There are a few options. Here are some ideas of what can be done. We can use knowledge about the process. For example, we can look at the literature to see what was the, the, the variance observed in the past. We can use an estimator to calculate the sample size or we can use a pilot study. So a pilot study is an initial study which the objective is to just uh, calculate the variance. So this is one idea. We can do a pilot study just to observe the, the effect that we're trying to look and use the variance from that. Each of these approaches has the advantages and drawbacks. And it's interesting to think about what are the positives and the negatives for each of these approaches. Now, what if we have a pair design? If we have a, pair, a comparison of two means under a pair design, well, pair designs, as we discussed before, they have higher power and confidence uh, than regular two sample comparison, which means that usually they can, rec they can use smaller sample sizes for equivalent power, especially when the variation between the units is relatively high, as the example that we saw in lecture number four. Take a second look at lecture number four and you notice that the variation between the pairs is relatively high. So if the within level variation is given by sigma epsilon and the between units variation is sigma u, so sigma u is the variance between the different observations and the sigma epsilon is the death variance between the different, uh, ob, um, how do you say, the different treatments that we have. So in this case, we have the power can be calculated, the difference, the, the proportion between unpowered si sample size and power sample size is given by this formula. So we calculate the unpaired sample size, and then from there, we calculated the pair sample size. We calculate the unpaired sample size using uh, the t-test, the, the, t the power t-test that we said before, and then we use this formula to calculate the paired sample size. Now, for the ANOVA, if we want to calculate the required sample size for the ANOVA procedure, so remember, in this case, we're using the ANOVA for multiple samples. We have like three, four, five samples on one factor of interest. Um, so for the ANOVA procedure, the formula are equivalent as using for the t-test. Essentially, the power sample size calculations is the equality F, 1 minus alpha equals to f beta. So we determined the f or the, the <clears throat> we determined the proportionality for the f for formulation for the value of alpha and beta. And with both distributions have a minus one degrees of freedom, where a is the number of samples that we are observing, and a n minus one for the denominator. Okay. 
Uh, then this parameter is a new one. It's the no centrality parameter, which is given by the difference observed between the samples. So this is given by a um, preliminary testing. So just to illustrate the idea, imagine that we have an experimental design where we have, we're comparing four samples, our confidence is 0 0.05, uh, and our error is 7, our standard deviation is 7, and suppose that we want to detect whether any of the four means, any two of them, present a difference of magnitude at least 12, with power 0 0.8. So with these initial parameters, we have two scenarios that we can consider whether if we have two levels that are above the mean or if we have one level that is above all of the others so in the first if two levels are above the mean this means that we have two levels that are like one is um, delta below the mean and the other is half delta above the mean so the difference between these two is about delta if we have one level above all the others this one level will be uh, minus minus delta divided by a and the others all will be delta divided by a and the difference between them is about delta okay so what we see here is which of the levels is delta different from the other levels now we use this t in this formula here to calculate this whole parameter and this parameter used to calculate this interactive formula so now that we have the whole that is calculated like this 5.8 uh, this tau, sorry. Um, and by calculating this, we have the power ANOVA test. In the power ANOVA test, we have four groups. The between variance is given by var tau that we calculate here. Um, and then the, inside, the internal variance is sigma squared, significance level, and the power. And this gives us that for each of the levels, we need four observa uh, nine observations. Okay. In the second case, is also the same. If we have one level biased in related to all others, we can use less observations, only seven observations in this case. Note that this calculation is for the sample size required for the ANOVA only, but after the ANOVA, the ANOVA tells us if one level is above the others, but we still want to do the pair test after the ANOVA with the alpha correction. In that case, it, usually the pair test after the ANOVA require more samples. And because more observations, and because we can use the same observations to calculate the ANOVA and to calculate the post hoc pair test, usually we want to concentrate on the sample size calculations of the post hoc pair test. That usually they where the bulk of the observations go. So these formulas that we discussed here, they only scratch the surface of sample size calculation. Uh, by understanding the characteristics of the experiment that we want to do, we can identify what is the minimum sample size that gives us a test with the desired confidence and power. So, for instance, one uh, paper that I recommend reading is this one that discusses the calculation of sample sizes for the specific case of algorithm comparison. Uh, so, go for this uh, article here to read about um, sample size for algorithm comparison, which I think is a situation that many of us will see in our uh, in your master degree. So I highly recommend reading this paper as a complement to this lecture. Uh, here are some other recommended leads. So this one is the paper that I recommended. There is also sample size calculations by, by uh, Paul Mittels that you can find on the internet and also this uh, paper by Zhang and, and Journal of Biopharma, there are also information about sample size calculation. So these are some papers that you can read to know more about this subject. Okay, thank you very much um, for this class and for, for uh, listening to this class. And I see you next time.